Hey there everyone, this is Samuel Johnson and welcome back to the Lyoko Retrospectives. And today we're going to be discussing episode 47 of Ko Lyoko Tip Top Shape. And in this episode, the school is going to... It's, uh, it's pretty much physical day, so to speak. Uh, pretty much everyone's get, pretty much everyone's getting tested for their physical stature, their health, just basically all their physical health. Jeremy's a bit nervous that Alita won't be able to pass since she doesn't have a since she doesn't actually have any health records on her because, well, as far as they know, she lived in Lyoko her whole life. But that really becomes a tabled issue when Xana and when Xana attacks again, activating another tower. In this case, what he does is that he has a phantom possess the school nurse Yolanda. That's what her name is. And just kidnap Alita just before she can get her examination. And as uh, and as such, the group runs to the factory, and they manage to beat her there since they detected the the activated tower first. As such, from there, it's just pretty much keeping her distracted and keep keeping her distracted so they don't have to deal with her that much, and ultimately deactivating the tower. It's pretty standard, and at the end of the day, the episode is kind of filler in that regard. As after as the stuff with the the uh, the, uh, the stuff with the physicals and so forth that that's mostly just in the beginning of the episode, and then after that, it's just dealing with the problem. However, so but yeah, otherwise, so in terms of plot, it's mostly just action. But one of the things, but I think, but I think one of the most important aspects of this episode, and one that I kind of want to talk about, is some is how they try and deal with the nurse. In this case. Jeremy, it turns out, has been studying Xana's phantom, so to speak. I mentioned how when Xana possesses someone, he usually has one of his, like, ghosts or whatever come out and, and jump into them. Well, it turns out that Jeremy's been doing his homework and looking into them, and he thinks that he can replicate them. As such, by activating a tower himself, he can actually create his own phantom and have that possess someone else, giving them abilities much like the ability Xana can best much like the much like the abilities that people as Xana have. As such, for the first time in the series, we see Jeremy himself activate a tower, and this it's it's green, and he and he sends one of his phantoms into Odd, giving him a giving him abilities similar to Yolanda. It's actually rather interesting and one that I think is kind of cool. Admittedly, yeah, it is kind of creepy still seeing the Phantom coming out of the computer and going into Odd, but I kind of like, but that aspect of the episode I kind of like, and I think is what I actually kind of attracts me to the episode. As we see Jeremy, well, doing more homework on, on Xana and how everything works, to the point where he's able to interface directly with one of the towers that Xana activates and ultimately and use that to his advantage. I, and on top of that, it's the first time we actually see the ki one of the kids get powered in the real world. While they have dealt with Xana's monsters on their own, Zan they've always had, usually they've had to, usually in the real world, they've had to rely on their wits and whatever they can find. And while they're still capable in the real world, as they're, as they're able to, as when Xana has devirtualized his monsters to the, in the real world, they've been able to deal with them. In this case, this in this case... It was actually kind of cool seeing them get powered up in the real world, as we see Odd get souped up, and as we see Odd get souped up and actually kind of go toe to toe with the nurse. Ultimately, it still goes awry as Xana hijacks the tower that Z that Jeremy activated and begins trying to kill Odd from within. Essentially, he's pumping up Odd's. Essentially, he's pumping up Odd to the point where he his body won't be able to take it anymore, and he'll just give out on him. But it's at the same time something that's rather interesting about the episode. Just seeing Jeremy be able to do that, and it shows that he has been learning more about Xana. And the idea of being able to power the kids in the real world is something that is explored later on. So kind of seeing this start here, I think, is rather good. I also like, and it's also kind of cool seeing Jeremy be able to actually directly interface with the towers. The only, so far, the only one, the only people who've been able to do that have been Aelita and Xana. Xana, in the sense that he's been able to activate them and. I lead in the sense that she's been able to deactivate them. So seeing Jeremy gets get that get that savvy in the tech and the supercomputer technology to the point where he can actually activate the towers on his own, it's nice. I like that. But otherwise, beyond that, there's not really much of it going for the episode. It's just kind of standard filler. There's nothing really much going on here. There's not really much in the way of an ape of the plot since, like I said, the physicals were only present in the beginning of the episode and then have forgotten the instant the nurses the instant the nurse is possessed. There's like one thing in there where I where Sissy gets angry because she's actually five pounds overweight, and so she gets pissy at that. And even and at one point she and she even sees the possessed nurse take Ilita, 
and at the end of the episode, the, and at the end of the episode, when the nurse is free, the kids just call her crazy. I bet, like, that's just a dick move, in my, in my opinion, but otherwise, the main plot is just trying to deal with Yolanda, and it's just kind of action from there. There is tension, there is more tension when we see, when we see Xana hijack the tower that Jeremy activated, which I think makes sense. Xana lives in Lyoko, of course, you'll be able to do that, and we've seen him activate the towers on a whim before, so... I guess it could be child's way for him to for him to override Jeremy's control. So, yeah, but otherwise, yeah, the episode's just standard filler. Nothing much really happens in the episode. Nothing really, nothing much comes of it. There's nothing really interesting that ha there's nothing really interesting that occurs beyond except for the stuff with uh, except for the stuff with Jeremy activating the tower and and powering up on the real world. That part I think is the best part of the episode. And I think it's really interesting and I think opens up new avenues. It could be explored in future episodes, and based on what I do know about future episodes, it does get explored again. So, yeah, I don't really have much to say on this episode. It's just standard filler. Xana tries to possess someone again, to possess someone to get Xana to Lyoko thing, or Xana to get Ilita to Lyoko. The kids try and stop them. We get this development with with Jeremy, other and be, but beyond that, nothing really much happens. Just action, action, action. So. Yeah. I don't really have much to say about this one. This is a really short vlog in this case, so... Yeah. Overall, fine episode. But again, the best part for me was this, was Jeremy being able to activate the tower and power up the kids in real in the real world. I like that. I like that, and I... And, and, I, and it is kind of cool to see. And I hope it get And I know... And based on what I do know, it does get expanded on later in the series, so... Yeah. That's about it. Thank you for watching. I'm Samuel Johnson, and I hopefully have more to talk about next week. Take care.